So let me ask you a question. Let's suppose that you took a test and you got 80 points on it. And let's suppose you took a test last week and you got 40 points on it. So here's my question. In which test did you do better? Now you might look at this and say, well, this is, this is incomplete information because I don't know how much were these tests out of. That's fair. So let's suppose this one was out of 160 and this one was out of 40. So now you might say, okay, so I got a 100% here, I got a 50% here, so I performed poorly on this one. Even though the total number of points here was more than the total number of points here, it didn't make sense for you to compare this with this, you compare the percentages. You're trying to neutralize the effect of the total number of points, right, by calculating percentages. And that's exactly the rationale for constructing common size financial statements. Over time, the balance sheet changes. The total number of assets on a balance sheet changes. Over time, the income statement changes because the total sales figure changes. So it never makes sense to compare across time or even with other firms using dollar figures, right? Because the scales are different, right? So in a common size financial statement, our idea is exactly the same. To take away the effect of scale or size, just like we're taking away the effect of the total number of points and making this comparison for these tests. So on a balance sheet, for example, if your balance sheet looks something like this, where you have assets, liabilities, and equity, what we're saying is that it doesn't make sense for you to compare, for example, 84 million in cash equivalents with 98, just like that. Comparing dollar figures doesn't make sense. Just like comparing 40 points with 80 points doesn't make sense. What you want to do is control for the effect of size or scale, recognizing that the total number of assets in 2019 here is 3.37, whereas it's 3.58 billion in 2020. So one way in which we can neutralize is by doing the following. We say, take this 84 million and divide it by 3373 so do 84 uh, divided by 3373 and likewise over here do 98 divided by 3588 right just like we divided 40 by the total number of points which was 40 for the uh, first test and for the second one it was 160 right same exact same idea and when we do that for each and every line item on the balance sheet, that is what gives us the common size balance sheet because now notice that the total assets are a common size of 100%. Now you can compare this 2.5% with the 2.7% and then say something like, you know, cash and cash equivalents are on the rise, right? So this is the idea behind a common size balance sheet divide every line item on the balance sheet by the total assets and then do a comparison. Income statement works exactly the same way. So here's a stylized income statement. You have sales, cost of goods sold, the works. In the income statement, the driving force behind the income statement is the sales figure. This is, this is the biggest number. Just like the total assets is the biggest number on the balance sheet, the sales figure is the biggest number in the income statement. So the way you proceed is you say, hey, okay, let me take a look at cost of goods sold, 1435, divide it by 2311, and take a look at what this percentage is. Net income, if it's 363, let me take a look at 363 divided by 2311. Do that. And when we do this for each and every line item on the income statement, we get a common size income statement. So notice that the regular income statement is in dollar figures, but a common size one is not. It's in percentage, right? So this is the common size. So this is what things look like in 2020. And why is this useful? Because now if you had figures for say 2018 and 2019, you could do a more meaningful comparison. Rather than comparing dollar figures for cost of goods sold in 2020 with 2018 and 19, you would rather compare the percentages. Or for that matter, if your cost of goods sold is 62.1%, you could more meaningfully compare with other firms in the same industry and then see what this percentage looks like for them. This would be an example of like a peer group analysis, but it never makes sense to just look at dollar figures. So again, here's the main idea. 
a common size balance sheet and a common size income statement are both trying to do the same thing. They're trying to neutralize the effect of size so that we can more meaningfully compare. And this, in this case, this neutralization is happening as follows. On a balance sheet, you're dividing every line item by the total assets. On the income statement, you're dividing every line item by sales. We're calculating a ratio, a very specific kind of ratio. Now, as it turns out, these are not the only types of ratios that we can calculate to assess the financial health of a company. There are others, liquidity ratios, profitability ratios, all these different types. We'll talk about those in upcoming videos.